Hello everyone, my name is Chad and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be looking at Rainbow Six Siege Operation Shifting Tide Operators, the the new gameplay and the kind of like the reveal almost. And I'm excited to, you know, get into it because I recently got into Rainbow Six Siege and by recently I mean like two or three, four months ago. And I've been, I fell in love with the game and now I just want to see, you know, what, you know, what they're bringing to the table now because it looks like these operators are going to be game changing. Yeah, uh, but anyway, thanks. Um, if you like this video, uh, hit like, and if you want to see more from me, subscribe, and let's uh, let's get right into it. Oh shit! Operation Shifting Tides is rolling in. Hold on, did she just threw? How many walls was? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! So it looks like this bolt-action sniper rifle was not a myth, and in fact was something that they were going to put into the game. That is very interesting. Um, I don't know how that's going to play out very well. I do not know how that's going to play out in very, especially in competitive games. But uh, it looks like a very powerful weapon. Let's let's just keep looking. Let's keep watching. To Rainbow Six Siege with a bang. The bang in question is the sound of the first bolt action sniper rifle to be deployed by Team Rainbow. It belongs to an attacker named Kali, and it comes with an explosive underbarrel gadget that lets her use it for more than just punching holes in walls and operators. On the other Holy side of shit. the action, you might notice strange things happening to your grenades as a defender named Wamai deploys a new gadget with Oh, he's terrifying. Appeal. He legitimately is Let's terrifying show you how to these look at. And take a look at the updated attractions on the newly reworked theme park map coming with Operation Shifting Tides. There's no escaping that sound when Kali is in the round. As the head of an Indian private military company, this medium speed, medium armor attacker ordered herself up a custom CSRX 300 rifle, and it has a bite to match its bark. A headshot is an instant kill, naturally, but a hit to the torso is an instant down. What? Uh, an instant down? That's a bit on the ridiculous side, don't you think? That's just like a super powerful rifle. Can you imagine going into a game of Rainbow Six and, and getting instantly down by a one shot? Jesus Christ. That that is going to be a very powerful weapon indeed. This this is going to be very interesting, a very interesting season. Uh, it's probably not going to be anything like last season because I feel like last season was hyped up by a lot and then wasn't really as epic as we thought it was. This actually looks incredible. Uh, but yeah, let's continue. Let's continue watching. One shot can penetrate through multiple breakable walls or through multiple defenders, or a combination of both. It can obliterate wooden barricades and unreinforced hatches, and it has a variable 5x and Holy shit. Scope. More than one operator. Can you imagine being lined up with like three or four operators? Chest shot. Smacks like four of them in a row. Jesus. If they're all lined up or anywhere, dude. You, this is game changing. Honestly, this this sniper rifle is probably going to change the game dramatically. I'm excited to see what they do next. This gun is powerful, but it isn't exactly subtle. In addition to the unmistakable sound, it creates a clear visual trail that shows that if she low key thick, by the way. I don't know if you guys caught a glimpse of that ass, but uh, she low key thick. Hold on a second. The unmistakable sound it creates. Look at that! Look at that ass! That is some butt right there. That is an ass if I've ever seen one, by ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, continue. A clear visual trail that shows the defenders where the shot came from. And any defender unlucky enough to be downed by it will automatically spin to face the direction of the shot, giving them a bit more intel on Kali's position. But, as they say, knowing is only half the battle. The other half is not getting shot by Kali. That's kind of I is, don't like that. That's pretty stupid. Can't penetrate reinforced walls or hatches. But this is where Kali's gadget comes in. From her underbarrel launcher, she fires LV explosive lances. So if you use it on a anything that's reinforced, or not reinforced, but um a wall or a barricade, 
It's basically an ash charge at that point. It probably soft breaches like a bastard. Um, and just des destroys pretty much anything. So it's almost like an advanced ash breach charge. You know what I mean? Which would make that three soft breachers with like rocket launchers. It's very interesting. Okay. These projectiles burrow into breakable and reinforced surfaces. Then they explode on both sides. That line of bandit batteries protecting your reinforced walls, gone. Helpful mute jammers, gone. If a lance hits a surface it can't burrow through, it'll still dig in and explode. So say goodbye to your maestro evil eyes, your barbed wire, and your deployable shields. Kali's gadget lets her do strategic it seems to me that her deployable sh or the her gadget is basically an EMP grenade that also explodes. It gets rid of pretty much every defender gadget, no matter what gadget it is. And instead of disabling something like a uh, like an evil eye or a, you know uh, a bulletproof camera, it just de destroys it completely. Which make how how would you counter that? Is the question. Like, what are you going to use to counter something that's that powerful? I feel like that's a little bit of a overkill when it comes to, like, defender gadgets. I don't know. I'm not a professional, so I don't know what I'm talking about. Damage to defender gadgets that is normally handled by frag grenades or Thatcher's EMP grenades, making her a powerful force for destroying enemy defenses and advancing her team's push to the objective. While the lance explosions will create holes in breakable surfaces, they won't create openings in reinforced ones for you to peek through, and they don't pop open Mira's black mirrors. So Kali's no substitute for a hard breacher. Okay. Her lances are vulnerable to being destroyed by Jaeger's ADS or grabbed by Wamai's gadget, which we'll tell you about next. If you're quick, you can also destroy a lance before it explodes by damaging the tail end, not the tip that appears on the other side of the wall. How would anybody get to that end? Sure that the lance only does minimal damage to operators, because when it comes to taking damage from Kali, you've got bigger con concerns. That beefy bolt action CSRX3 Something that they, they said they were going to do was something to do with Finca. And I'm wondering if that's just the way it looks in pre-alpha, but that is 120 uh, health, which is interesting. Uh, yeah. 100 and her two sidearm options, the P226 Mark 25 or the C75 Auto. I see more people using the C75 Auto rather than the, the, uh, the P20. Are suddenly behaving oddly. This medium armor, medium speed Kenyan defender is employed by Kali's PM. Wait, he's a medium armor, medium speed? No, he looks like a three speed operator. He looks like he should be able to sprint around. I don't, I guess, I mean, he's not beefy and he's not wearing a bunch of armor. In fact, it looks like he's wearing uh, something around along the same lines of like knock. So I mean he should be a three speed op. Why is he, why did they decide to give him two a two speed? Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that. See, and she brought him along when she joined Team Rainbow. Well, my has a gadget called the Magnetic Neutralizing Electronic Targeting System, A.K.A. the Magnet. Magnet devices will stick to surfaces when thrown and act on any attacker project that passes within their active radius and line of sight. It goes like this. First, the magnet stops the projectile, resets its detonation timer, and pulls it in. The projectile then detonates at the magnet's location, and the magnet itself explodes. One That's magnet interesting. can grab one projectile. Flashes will still flash, frags will still frag, but they'll do so at a time and place dictated by Wamai's gadget. And here's the thing. It's not just flashes, frags, and smokes. It's ashes breaching rounds. Okay. It's Capitao's bolts, Ying's candelas, Nomad's air jabs, and a whole cluster of fuses charges, if you're really dedicated. It's Thatcher's EMPs, Zofia's concussions and impacts, and Gridlock's track stingers, which, 
will still spike things up, so use the extra time from the detonation timer reset to shoot them first. The magnet can meddle with a lot of gadgets, but it won't mess with Hibana's X Kairos pellets or Twitch's shock drone charges. Neutralizing gadgets is good, but Wamai can go one step further. With some creative placement, he's not just relocating projectiles to a safe detonation spot. He's putting them in places to cause problems for the attackers. Capitao could end up roasting his teammates if he's not careful with his bolts. Sledge might want to think twice about dropping It seems to me that it has a large area of effect and it does a lot of cool shit. So I can see people using him instead of a Jaeger, but the one thing that people like most about Jaeger is it isn't his really his ADS, but it's his speed and his weapon. Which I'm not sure exactly what weapon it looks like he's got the the AUG. Which is a good good weapon to be using. Um I don't think but yeah. Yeah, he's got the AUG, and I don't think he gets an uh, uh, an ACOG, but I it, I feel like he should be a three speed. Like that's something that I'm gonna I'm gonna keep. That, that's something that I'm sticking with. That is he needs he needs to be a three speed op. We don't have enough three speeds anywhere. Grenades down through a hole he smashed in the floor, and Goyo's Vulcan shield. Be Comes a little more dangerous with a magnet device stuck to the back. Oh. The devices themselves are okay. destroyed if attackers spot them, and Wamai gains them gradually throughout the round, similar to Legion and his goo mines. This is in this While is super Gator's interesting. DS simply neutralizes incoming objects. Wamai takes a more creative approach by moving those objects. Well, if you have both, no one's getting in there. Among the attacking team, uncertainty huh. that he can capitalize on with his MP5K or AUG A2. Yeah, okay, so he's got an MP5. Or P12 sidearm. He's got an Italian pistol and a regular pistol. You've been watching these new operators do their thing on Theme Park, the latest map in the Siege lineup to get thoroughly reworked for balance and better competition. This is going to be super First thing interesting. You'll is that the large train that used to bisect the second floor is gone? Making for quicker no navigation and okay. close quarters skirmishes. All right. The haunted first floor section has been transformed into a throne room and armor. I will say that the new canal, or not the new canal map, the new theme park map is a lot brighter, making things easier to see. Because I know for a fact that when I played canal, or not, damn it, why do I keep saying canal? Whenever I'd play theme park, it'd be so difficult to spot some operators just because it's so fucking dark in there. But this new brighter one will. Seems to me like it'll make it easier for you to spot your opponents. Complete with a dragon guarded stairway. Elsewhere, a cheeky new walkway above another staircase creates interesting opportunities for defenders and attackers alike. While some new arcade cabinets provide extra cover at a crucial second floor window. And the first floor arcade entrance is complete. Completely blocked. Fuck yeah. The new theme park map will be free for all players when Operation Shifting Tides launches. The new operators, Kali and Wamai, will be available at launch for Year 4 Pass holders and Uplay Plus subscribers. And a week later, all players will be able to unlock them with Renown or R6 credits. For more on Rainbow Six Siege, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Alright, that's, that's everything. That is literally the end of that whole video. Um, so, for my overall thoughts on the new season, I think it's going to be de certainly an interesting season. The, the operators seem interesting. I think I'm leaning more towards Cali than I am Wamai, just because of that sniper rifle. I've always been a sniper guy, and I love this C7-something. I can't remember what the name of it is, but, um, sh sh her gadget... Is, it seems like it'll be an overpowered gadget. But also, I feel like her super useful gadget is nullified by the fact that she's got a sniper rifle. But then again, her sniper rifle is an instant down. Which means people who are really good at aiming, who play by aiming, are probably going to have like a good time using this new operator. And now, well, my gadget seems like you can 
it feels more of a strategic uh, gadget. Unlike like Jaeger's ADS, it feels like you can do a lot more than just stop people from throwing things in and causing a problem. You look, it seems like you can almost have a reverse effect on it and cause a lot more issues than you know they were expecting. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna read some of these comments and see what uh, see what other people have to say. Ying allowed to see through flashes gets flashed by a friendly. Why? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, I'm sure the grenades intercepted by Wamai's gallant cat count as friendly fire won't be an issue at all. Yeah, that is actually raises a good question. What if you know somebody else's explodes next to him? I, is it going to count as friendly fire? Like. If I took Wumai's gadget and put it next to the hostage and somebody throws a grenade and it explodes and kills the hostage, who's at fault? Is it me or is it the enemy team because it's their grenade? It's... Oh, okay. Plant Wumai's gadget under a hostage and wait for a grenade. I swear to God I thought about this already. I did not just read that. Operation Friendly Fire. Cali, two kills, three deaths, 16 assists. Callie, why do we Uh. Um. Jesus Christ. You know what? The, the Callie exists. Stature and glass. I, I'm going to head out. It, it is true. It's almost like they bo both of them have just become absolutely just no reason for it there's no reason to have them here at all anymore oh my god a headshot is an instant kill flashbacks to to getting instant kills by random hit fire pencil shots through a wall <laughs> when you see your teammate get his headshot off by Cali <laughs> guys hear me out magnets and uh, uh, a sniper oh my god why didn't we think of that if Wumai takes my grenade and kills one of the teammates, I'll get kicked. So careful with that. You should take. You should ch change the grenade damage so Wumai gets the kill and no one gets kicked. Um. Oh yeah. Anyway, thanks guys. Uh, tell me what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you want to see more from me, I'll uh, subscribe. And I will see you later.